What's going on, everybody? Your boy is back. I'm healed, and I am ready for Dynasty Week that is starting right now. Talking rookie sleepers, talking all of your Dynasty questions. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, Tuesday, May 14th. Welcome in, one and all. The gang is back together. School to be back. Welcome back, Mike. I did it. Made it back? Yeah. Was that the objective there? Just Oof. your boy <laughs> your boy was down bad. And we I mean we talked about it briefly on the show before we were interrupted. Uh, uh yeah, I did here. And you know, you got a little bit you know I did. You got a little bit arrogant. I got a little high on the own supply. <laughs> yeah, you you started talking about ah, you know, I I've been there, done that. I'm not getting sick again. Yeah, yeah. The 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 Roan ski had been in my house multiple times, and I kept dodging it. Yeah. To the point, I'm like, well, I mean, there's clearly only one one answer here, and it's I am now immune. Right. Yeah. At that point, it's impervious. Right. Except it was my body was just secretly waiting to get completely destroyed. Yeah, you uh, you had it yourself a week. Sure did. But you're back, and we are thankful for that. Because it's Dynasty Woo! Week. Welcome to Dynasty Week. It's Dynasty Week. That slaps. You what? a big fan? It's when it's Dynasty Week, Jay. You gotta. Oh, yeah, I'm a very big fan of that. Gotta bring it. We've got rookie sleepers, some late draft pick strategy today. We've got a dynasty mailbag show. We have trade for trade away players and trade tips for dynasty leagues on Thursday. It's a special week each year as we give a little extra attention. Now we have a dynasty podcast, but we take one week a year to do a special dynasty week set of episodes. And, uh, well, we also do some special giveaways because if you go to footclangiveaway.com right now, we are giving away a signed Devon A. Chan jersey. Woo! Wait, what? If you can catch it. Yeah, it's going to be going fast. Who authorized this? You were sick. I, I that's what I'm saying. Who authorized this? And we spent this? your money. Yeah, we, we and we did. It. We did specifically, Andy and I did take that out of the Mike Bucket portion yeah. of our finances. Yeah, thank not. you, Mike. We the do people keep, applaud you. We keep all the money in buckets, <laughs> right. like, the, like the Home Physical. Depot buckets. Yes, five gallons. And we <laughs> went into your bucket, and we bought our listeners a signed Devon HN jersey and told them. I thought there was an understanding that you never reach into another man's bucket. Well, when he's missing, that used to be the case, but this was a chance to get a HN jersey and give it away. So sorry, but not sorry. Uh, FootClanGiveaway.com for that. If you have the UDK Plus, you can already dive into the startup rankings, the rookie rankings, the team opportunity pages, trade for candidates, and you can get it at the lowest price if you don't have it at UltimateDraftKit.com. Excited to kick it off with a dynasty-centered quick question of the day. Nick in North Carolina writes in, says, what rookie wide receivers are not getting enough attention and could contribute quicker than expected. Good question, Nick. What do you think, Jay? Um, I I like all three of our answers. Um, yours, Andy, is my favorite. So I'll save Are you, you for last. Me, oh, for last. Okay. Um, but I, I want to throw out Jermaine Burton. I don't I don't feel like he has gotten enough buzz. This is a wide receiver out of Alabama. He didn't have a fantastic production profile. Uh, but he was he's very athletic, very talented, you know, four, four, five speed, six feet, 200. Um, he still led them 
in receiving, even though he didn't have prolific production. Like for the team, he was very, very good. But it's his landing spot that I think really matters. And if you watch in the draft how excited the Bengals were, he went in the third round with the 80th overall pick to the Cincinnati Bengals. And they were like, yes, they got their guy. They wanted him. This was a this was a player who was thought to be higher than this, but character concerns uh, got, behind the scenes. He might have a tood. He might have a might have a bit Tude of a tood problem. Alert. Might might be a little bit of a Raphael situation. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. I like it. Okay. Raphael had a tood. Yeah. Um cool. That's why he was Mike's favorite. <laughs> he was cool, but he was rude. Yeah. That that is Which the, is a weird line to just gloss over. And like in a song, you're like, hey, you know, this guy's cool but rude. <laughs> well, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's cool. He's a cool guy, but he's just really rude. I feel like that's one and the same, Mike. The cool guys. <laughs> They're always a little rude. They're a little rude. Um, they got George a George Pickens, cool but rude. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a tood. Yeah. Uh, so Very anyways, helpful. Jermaine Burton has a tood, but that dropped him down to the third round. But that's still good draft <laughs> capital. That's day two. 80th overall pick and the landing spot he goes they to a, he goes to very nice <laughs> very nice swish um he goes to a, a great quarterback in Joseph Burrow and Tyler Boyd's gone so there's a need for a wide receiver and T same, Higgins same initials as his quarterback too. T Higgins is about to be gone you know we the expectation oh I he's going to be gone long yeah, gone is that he will not be there next year so you've got Jermaine Burton all of a sudden, he's got rookie year opportunity here without Tyler Boyd. And if he should take advantage of that, he should be the wide receiver, too, for Joe Burrow next year. Tyler Boyd had his games and his times in Cincinnati. Injuries to Chase and Higgins were frequent. And Jermaine Burton is a big play type of player. Yeah, so I won't play. I won't be shocked if, you know, some of these guys are going to make plays early and – I think you're going to see them in waiver wires early because of it. So, Mike, you can go next with a wide receiver not getting enough attention. I am in – I am lockstep with you. I agree completely about this player. I love him. And it's – But now you have to say his name. It, it, the player's name, is, it's Jalen Polk. I tried to give him a bit of a, a bump uh, a couple weeks ago talking about how he's just – he's falling into third rounds of uh, rookie drafts. And he was taken in the second round, 37th overall by the New England Patriots. And he goes right into a starting job. Like the, the Patriots depth chart is, is wide open. Uh, Demario Douglas from last year, it was, it was a fun rookie season, but it's like, he's a slot guy where Polk should immediately go in to, to being an outside player. And I feel like Polk's a slot guy. I don't think he'll. Be, I don't think he'll get used like that, though. I mean, he's six one. He's he's thinner, two oh three. But to be six one, uh, good breakout age. But like that's a good enough size. And at least the the plan right now, I believe, for the Patriots with the actions is, it's like moving forward. This is the new regime. It's they're hoping that is Drake May and Jalen Polk are both hits, and they are the future of the offense. And and it look, scouting players is very difficult. I get it wrong. Fantasy football, though, the entire fantasy football community gets things wrong. The NFL gets things wrong, and right now, the like it just seems like everything is. The NFL has gotten this terribly wrong. Polk is not good. Well, what if what if he actually can play? Like, what if it works out with him and, and Drake May? And this is instant week one opportunity. Like, should be running the most snaps of the wide receiver core. And that's crazy. Great hands, and yeah, and it's, great contested catch. And like w watching him on film, he could play. It uh, well, I don't know if it'll translate to the NFL, but the he, opportunity plus getting to start with the quarterback, everything is just so lined up that if he can, in fact, hang in the NFL, the 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 value for the amount of of targets that he is going to get for so cheap in rookie drafts, is it still blows my mind. And, and if he hits, be, because obviously if Drake May ends up being a good right. quarterback, this yeah. is fantastic. If Polk hits, we can have unbelievable Polka music drops. <laughs> I mean, we the the amount that the fantasy footballers can do with yeah, Jalen Polk. That's fair. Uh, you know, is that what you're most we're rooting for? You. Well, excited I, for? I usually root for names that can be good nicknames. 
He uh, like the Butterman. <laughs> it's I think I don't even know who the Butterman is oh, yeah, anymore. Who is the butter Melton. Man? Uh, oh, Bo, Bo Melton. Bo Melton. <laughs> Why is he the Butterman? Because he melts. He melts like, melt. he like butter. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Whoa. No, I know. I know. I wasn't here for that. No, that was a foot cast. Thank goodness. Um, Polk. They did say because it seemed like an early pick, right? He went thirty-seven. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff Howe from the Athletic had talked about the fact that there were multiple teams that were about yes. to select Jalen Polk, and that's why they just took the shot at him at thirty-seven. Um, you know, he did play inside some at Washington, played outside, good hands, good opportunity. He would he was mocked by a lot of people mm -hmm. into the first round. And so, and then the name I'm bringing up is Roman Wilson, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, third round draft pick, uh, a steal in my opinion by Pittsburgh, who loses Deontay Johnson, uh, who will have a new quarterback or two this season, and George Pickens cannot sustain the entirety of the passing offense here. Roman Wilson is a pro-ready receiver, in my opinion. He comes in, uh, he's an undersized guy, but he made every play at Michigan. We've talked about the Steelers' general success in drafting wide receivers. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. They're so good at drafting wide receivers. Well, day two and day three wide receivers, we have Heinz Ward in 98. Antoine yep. Randall L., that worked out. Uh -huh. Mike, well, Mike, Mike Wallace. Third that round tough, pick. That was a tough one. Yeah, I don't know why that was so tough. Wallace. Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. Antonio Brown. Martavis Bryant. Juju. Which was a great pick at the time. I right. know it's easy to dunk now, but that was phenomenal. James Washington. That one didn't work out. No. But then Deontay Johnson. Claypool, yeah. who started hot and didn't work out. And then Pickens and now Roman Wilson. Those are all the day two that's and day so three. That's so wild, man. So that's, that's a lot. Day two – and day three, and they waited on wide, Wilson because wide they could. receiver picks. Those type of picks have a very low hit rate, and their hit rate is like ninety percent. So when you look at the NFL's hit rate, they're being buoyed by the Steelers. I dare you, you know? to name. I dare you to name more Steelers wide receivers beyond George Pickens and Roman Wilson. Oh, on the depth chart right yeah. now. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh gosh, who did they just sign? Um. I want to say Devontae Parker, but that's uh, no. He's on I the know, Eagles. I know what you're thinking of, but yeah. no, just try to guess. I, you're not going to look dumb. I promise. Yeah, this is what I mean. <laughs> you would remember Calvin Austin, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's still there. I, I'm Denzel just to... Mims is on the roster. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Scotty Miller's on the roster. Okay. Van Jefferson's on the roster. Oh, Van, Van Jefferson. Jefferson. That yeah, was that, that was the, the name. Yep. Quez Watkins is on the roster. That was bothering me. I was like. Yeah, that's what so. It is. Yeah, right now Van Jefferson is slotted as a starter. That's all yeah. Roman Wilson has to beat. Roman Wilson is really good. He's got exceptional speed, and I think the best or the second best hands in the draft class. And he is born and bred to be a stealer, in my opinion. Hard nosed, hard worker, hard worker. Yeah, I think they're going to fall in love with him quickly. So this, there you this go. This is the guy that took a plane to school in high school every single day. What? You, you don't know the story. You don't know his story in Hawaii. He, he took oh he did to another island. He had to take a plane to another island every single morning and then fly back that night. Take the bus transportation so that he could be at a school with this football program. It was like he was a he's been a professional for a decade. Also, he flies free forever now. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, the mileage he must have. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> right in first class. Let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. Well, as of this recording, we know that the Chiefs will face the Ravens to kick off the season. That's, That's awesome. Very fun. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll get the full release of the schedule. That's also fun. Cardinals signed Zay Jones, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, to We're a one-year one contract. I have always liked Zay Jones. Um, I think he's a very good wide receiver, and he's going to fit in perfectly on a depth chart that needs a Zay Jones. What? Because <laughs> they have Marvin Harrison and then Michael Wilson, who's going to fulfill a depth role. You know, they hoped he could be the number two. I think he could be the two, but Zay Jones is a better real-life wide receiver today than Michael Wilson is. When they looked at the depth chart, and they're like, oh, guys – as of right now, Greg Dortch is probably a starter, and we can't have that. They just they they hate they hate the Dortch. That's Dortch disrespect. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Every time he's on the field, he produces, but this team hates him. Last year, Arizona wide receivers ranked 29th in total fantasy points. Yeah. Because they didn't have any. Mm. Because they didn't have wide receivers. Best. Hollywood Brown vacates 19% of targets. It's going to be – I'm not saying you draft Zay Jones. I'm saying he may – you may be shocked oh. to pick him up in waivers. He'll be on plenty league. of waiver shows. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're if you're doing a best ball league where you're going 18 deep, Zay Jones is a great pick. He's going to have some touchdowns. He's going to be on the field. This was a player who, at this time of the offseason, there weren't other veteran wide receiver options to add to your NFL roster, which is why he made the rounds. He went to Kansas City. I think it was Tennessee he went to. And he, this was, he picked Arizona. He wanted to play in, on, a, on a roster where he can walk right in and be a starter for a good quarterback. And then we got a quote from Sean Payton, and it's the offseason, and it's dynasty related too. So let's just... Bring it up and talk about it. Yeah. Sean Payton said, quote, we'll go by what we see when asked about the possibility of the team holding a running back competition this offseason. Um, not committing to which running back will be the RB1. So he didn't come out and say, oh, no, Javante's our RB1 to start the offseason, which a lot of coaches come out and say yeah. about their players. Um, he says, who knows what we're going to get when summing out how things could – summing up how things could play out. So – Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin, Te te Samaj P. Ryan. Technically, Samaj P. Ryan. I mean, 50 receptions. You cannot dismiss 50 receptions. That's no. just the right amount to ruin the other players. Oh, but I'm, I'm saying P. technically because we'll, we'll see if P. Ryan's on the team. And then uh, Audric Estimate. Samaj P. Ryan, it, it, it is really shocking or whatever words you want to use, disgusting to realize how much football he played last year. Cause it, I mean – you're telling me he had 56 targets. He had 50 receptions, and you don't remember them. They didn't. They they really didn't happen. It's unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is we talked about the overreaction episode last episode, which was, and we disagreed on this one, was don't overreact to how Javante looked last year coming off that catastrophic knee injury. And I, this, do you want to know why I disagreed? No. I okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, you asked. The, the, the main reason I disagreed with him, because I agreed with the other two examples. Sure. The main reason I disagreed with Javante Williams is that I think that's very, very true of a player very, very established. But I don't view Javante Williams through that lens at the NFL level because he hasn't done it over a sustained amount of time. And because Sean Payton specifically brought in Jaleel McLaughlin, specifically brought in Samaj P. Ryan, and specifically brought in Audrey Gestime and inherited Javante Williams, I have less confidence in that narrative. It makes complete sense. This quote of we'll go by what we see, I mean, this is basically good news if last year's Javante was because of the injury, was because he needed another year to work out, recover, get to full strength, because then what they'll see, like if Javante was, if he returns to what he was, he was then he's the dude here. He was great. Yeah, he was great. If this is a Chris Godwin situation where – you know, Chris Godwin came back really quick, too, from a knee injury we didn't expect him to be back from. And then he never got better. It was like he, he you know, they didn't let him get all the way recovered. So, you know, TBD, we'll, we'll go by what we see. I was curious if Javante had better splits in the second half, but his yards per carry were worse in the second half than the first half of the season. Uh -oh. So that is not the case. Now, McLaughlin averaged 5.4 a carry, didn't get as many carries, led all running backs and targets per route run. P. Ryan caught a bunch of balls, and then, you know, Javante profiles as the most complete back when healthy. So it'll be interesting to watch. And then Audrey Gestime just sitting there waiting in the wings for things to shake out depth chart-wise. When we were discussing the pre-show, the different ways that this running back depth chart can shake out, it could be Javante, it could be Samaj, it could be Estime, McLaughlin, but McLaughlin is the only one that is involved in every situation. However, Feels it shakes out. So if you're in a dynasty league, um, you know he he could be a, a sneaky, a more valuable asset than he seems. So then, Mike and and Jason, do you see what do you do with Javante in a dynasty league right now? Are you in a position where you're so stuck with the disappointing season that that shipping him off? is impossible and you're just what's well, praying for the resurgence i think you can trade him but you're the value of what you would get for him right now to me is not worth it because like are maybe you can get a second for next year maybe i think you could get a second and 
But so at so, this point, would, would you trade I'd, him for a second? No, I wouldn't. Either. I would for for a 2025 second. No, I would. I'd ride it out, and if it doesn't work out, that it's Javante. That you're like, then you just take your lumps. I'd rather shoot for the upside with him than than get a second for next year. So hold and hope. Yeah, that's yep. where I am. Any other news that you guys have or want to discuss? Any rumors? Anything you have? I got nothing. Nothing? Nothing new breaking? Okay. We'll take a quick break and come back with some more Dynasty questions. All right. Let's go ahead and dive in on this very fine, beautiful Dynasty weekday to some Dynasty mailbag. 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 Oh, it's Dynasty. <laughs> Wait, you almost just said the end of that. You you stopped the singing. Well, it's, it's you know, sing talking. Did we have – did Papa Josh do a mailbag drop on the show last week? I believe I heard that you heard it? happen. What I heard did it. you think? Because you're the kind of – Well, I didn't listen to it oh, because I okay. respect my ears. Okay. It was actually – Pretty, it was okay. It was pretty good. Oh well, then maybe relative I'll give it a to listen. the other producers and what they've contributed yeah, yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. Don't hear what Andy's not <laughs> saying. It was pretty good by comparison, okay. not in general. Like if all the fruit is moldy and then there's fruit right. with just a little mold, that fruit's the better For moldy sure. fruit. If you had to eat one, I'm eating the one with the just least a little mold. mold. Yeah, that's what we're saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's a moldy oldie. Compared to the other moldy fruit, he was pretty okay. tasty. All right. Wait. All right. Dynasty questions here. Um, There's some Dynasty tips questions. First one comes in from Beverly in Michigan. Help! With two exclamation points. So not just a standard help. Uh, what is a piece of advice for just starting out in a Dynasty league? Mm. I have been playing fantasy football for a few years. Just signed up in a Dynasty uh, league with my son's husband and three of my brothers Ooh. please help this old lady out that is what beverly the lions fan says okay uh well we we give tips every uh every year my main tip is usually when you're starting out in dynasty so you're going to do a dynasty startup draft i'm you're going to have to punt something right you can't be great everywhere and if i have to punt something i'm punting running backs uh, the the shelf life of them will turn over quickly, and the startup roster is, um, the startup roster is going to be what your foundation is built upon for a long time. So I focus on wide receivers. I want as many young, uh, established, proven commodity wide receivers that I can get on my roster. Do you agree with that, Mike? I mean, yeah. I think you you could definitely if you build that foundation, and then you end up with some slightly older, productive running backs. I've, that you get late in drafts and you're running into the season with Kamara and Connor and Mostert and, yeah, that's and a, maybe one young name. It's exactly it of trading for like real good wide receiver production. I found that can be very difficult where and and in rookie drafts and everything, but where like we're just replacing running back value of of some kind to give you enough. It's much easier in the rookie drafts and then it, I mean crazy things happen on the waiver wires more often to me for the running back position and just trading for uh, guys who are kind of at the end where their dynasty value is low, but their real value for that season is still pretty high. And don't overemphasize youth in totality as well. I mm -hmm. mean, I think a good example of that, unfortunately, is Javante Williams, a player who the entire dynasty fantasy community was merely – just begging to have at the tippy top of the list for the future, yeah, and now it was going to be awesome. We, and and it still could work out, but the likelihood is much lower. And you could end up having all that expectation and none of the reality. And that happens a lot in Dynasty, whether it's Juju or you know the the guarantee. Even if like Garrett Wilson's career ends up staying where it is now compared to what people think it would be, he's putting up numbers like Deontay Johnson did. And that's not the kind of outcome that you would have hoped for. So it's it's hard when it's all anticipatory. If all your picks are, I hope it ends up this way, right. you could end up in a, a difficult spot. Potential is great, 
but known commodities are better. All right, next question comes in off of Instagram, C Jones 32 Which rookie quarterbacks would you take over Trevor Lawrence <laughs> in a Dynasty League startup <laughs> draft? I love this question. I would say the Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Man. Like the expiration date on that <laughs> milk carton is starting to creep forward in terms of meeting the potential that people hope for, and I don't think it's – expired no no it, 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 but it is uncomfortable the shine is off it certainly hasn't expired we're like smelling there, yeah you're, sure. you're like hey did you, hey you can you give me a second opinion on this trevor lawrence is going to play a long career he's going to get another contract he'll be fine for the nfl and in fantasy be a usable asset there, there's no question of that um whether he will ever be a sensational top tier fantasy asset because he's throwing for 4,500 and 35. That seems like that's what you're smelling. You're like, ah, I don't think that's going to happen. Do either of you think that's going to like, obviously it can happen, but do you believe that that happens? Do you think he levels up he played, played through a lot of injuries last year? Do you think he gets to a place where he's throwing 4,500 and 30 touchdowns? I think he is set up to have a Matt Ryan outlier season at some point, but most of the seasons are going to be like this. So I think he could have a special year here or there. He has, uh, since coming into the league, he's averaged 19.3 passing touchdowns per season. Boo. <laughs> While having the fourth most uh, total passing attempts of any quarterback uh, since coming in. Started 50 of 51 games. So it has not happened. Uh, but now you have you know, a retooling. You have Gabe Davis and uh, – Wow, you oh, said that. Man. You said that so sincerely. You, you said that like it was real. Wow. You said it like that was a real thing. Like, oh, it sounded now like got, a man reading a teleprompter. He's, he's got Gabe Davis, so he's re they're retooling. They retooling. Gave Gabe Davis. Oh man, that's getting your tools from the yeah. swap mart. I think Brian Thomas is more like the Brian lead. Thomas is great. Yeah, but lead, try that again. Stay that yeah. sense over. The retooling. Take out. Take out. Gabe Honestly, Davis. what happened was. I was I, all I could think of was Brian Wilson. Oh, you can't get the name right. So I was trying to buy myself a little bit. Of time. <laughs> I know Gabe Davis is there. <laughs> okay. And, all right. Would you rather have as an? Answer? And I was like, well, the Beach Boys are not playing for right the Jags. No. Um, uh, but would that Brian have, guy. <laughs> would you rather have Kyler or Trevor Lawrence if you're an NFL franchise starting today? Ooh, that's a really fun question. Not fantasy football. Not fantasy football. Uh, probably Lawrence. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I was just curious because those are both number one picks that have not quite done enough to make you feel like the fan base has hit a home run. Yeah, right, hundred percent. But the they're same. also not bad enough to where you're like, you you do say, "Wow, I could be way worse off." The stat that Mike read last on Trevor Lawrence is the tiebreaker for me with Kyler. He's played fifty of fifty one games, and he's had his own injuries. I mean, he just he is a he's a tough guy. Whatever you want to say about his touchdowns, which you can't say much good about it because he doesn't throw many. Um, Caleb Williams, yes, or Trevor Lawrence, Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels. He, yeah, I'll go Jaden. JJ McCarthy. That's where I'll probably take Trevor. Yeah, I'd, I'm fine going Trevor. Dak or Trevor in a dynasty. <laughs> I'm taking Dak. Yeah, me too. Me he's only thirty. I mean, how old is Kirk well, Cousins? Be, by the way, Dak will be thirty-one 30, this Dak, year. Uh, Kirk will be starting the season at thirty-six. Okay, so like you just invested a huge amount of money into a thirty-six-year-old quarterback. Dak at thirty is not that yeah. ancient. I'd I'm rather sure have a few premier years. Hundred percent. Drake May. So uh, the real question on the you know which rookies would you take over Trevor Lawrence is JJ McCarthy and Drake May. Would you take you could throw Bo Nix in there. Would you take any of those three over Trevor Lawrence? I would not. Probably not. I lean no as well. Drake May is so perfectly named because he, he may be all right, and he may not. He's just – Oh, I thought it was a Drake thing. Oh, well, no. Goodness, <laughs> no. Um, Let's jump into a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. Love the show. Just had a quick question. How exactly do y'all go about valuing rookies in a dynasty startup draft? considering that they've never played an actual NFL down. Thanks. Jason? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. If you're evaluating rookies, we, you know, we 
scout them personally, so we watch a ton of film and we declare our opinions are like, oh, I think this guy's really, really good, or he's average, or he's below average. So you take some of that, you take a lot of historical data, you take draft capital, and you really look at, well, what has recent history shown us rookies doing? And then we try to essentially slot guys into that kind of expectation on production based on everything we see. I mean, it, right? So in the end, I don't know if there's, you know, something where this caller is wanting, like, how, how do you actually value them compared to a startup draft ranking? You know, is the, is the first rookie worth a third round startup pick? You know, Mike, I just, I think that this is one of the, it's one of the best aspects of dynasty football or, or dynasty fantasy football is that you you get to call your shots of I think that this player is is going to be great. So I mean it, like don't the my advice is always don't get carried away versus players who are not aging out and you know that they're great players. But still have some fun. Like get guys who you believe in, get guys you want to root for on your team. So like valuing rookies over veterans, you just everything that Jason laid out, and then also some of your own. Just like sometimes you got to go with just your gut of how you feel about a player because you're mixing in all of the variables. And and like Jason said, playing the percentages of how players perform yeah. when drafted at certain draft capital spots over time is very important. Breaking news. Well, um, we've got some money coming someone's way. Money, 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 money. Is it me? No, oh, it's Jared dude. Goff. Oh, I'm rich. <laughs> Introducing a four-year, $212 million extension. Oh, man, that sucks it wasn't me. That that's, that's a big contract. 170 <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> and it's funny because J- Jason annoyingly made me rank four <laughs> terrible quarterbacks for Dynasty while we were in here earlier just talking after the show. And he's like, I mean, this question was a, just oh, terrible. It, it was super flex was like, backups, right? So it was Joe Flacco, Jameis Winston, um, Co- Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson and Hinden Hooker. And I, and I put, uh, you know, Hooker at the bottom with Zach Wilson. And I was like, Hooker's career's not going to happen. And then Jared Goff just signed a four-year deal. So it won't happen in Detroit, barring injury. Um, that's a lot of money. I think it's worth it. I think they've, they're have they building their own machine there in, in Detroit. And, uh, well, he's only made $161 million so far, and now he gets $170 million on top of that. <laughs> so he may own some of the Lions at some point. Did, wow. did anybody see... You talk about dynasty. When he was traded away from Los Angeles. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yes. You know, the Lions were condemned uh-huh. to Dude. have Jared Goff as he their sent quarterback. To the Isle of Misfit Toys. And then now the Lions were supposed to take a quarterback. That wasn't going to be who yeah, they were going to They were they eating were his start. salary. And then uh and then they did. They took Hinnon Hooker. And then it was like, oh my gosh, we've got a great quarterback. We've got our our franchise quarterback of the future. And uh, Hinton Hooker was dropped. Yeah, it's the right move. And yeah. that sucks. That sucks for Hinton Hooker, man. How do you? Well, no, I mean Hinton Hooker was what a third. He was round a third pick? round pick. I mean, whatever. <laughs> well, I'm just saying I mean, you like, don't get drafted in the third round with a guarantee that you're ever going to get a chance to start a game. Fair, but he he also fell to the third close. because he was no. Yes, third well, round. I'm just saying he no, was a third round on quarterback. his ACL, right? Yeah, I mean, I to me a third round quarterback, you're drafting that guy to. If he's lucky, compete at some point in time. I agree. Not you don't get handed a, a starting job. Okay, in the third you got to get yes, third round quarterback. I'm just thinking in totality of like you were drafted in the third round of the NFL draft, and you you may never start a game. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that's fair. I'm mean, looking over at Desmond Ritter, going, "Come on, yeah. man." Um. Uh, so there you go, Jared Goff and Dynasty. Now, what's the prognosis? I mean, I in Dynasty he. He's a top I mean, he's for sure a top fifteen guy. I'd say borderline top twelve ish. But he's it's still Jared Goff and you but what's nice about him is you know we've known for years when you can play Jared Goff and the hit rate on 
following the process of Jared Goff is at home and he's against a bad secondary. Fire it, him up. It's been – it's felt fantastic. Would you rather have Goff or Tua in Dynasty? Oh. We can predict Goff's good starts more. I would, I would rather have Goff. I'll go – I mean, I think there, there's – Tua still has a higher chance of – becoming an every week quarterback i don't think jared goff is ever going to become that for fantasy i got really curious and wanted to look up the last 10 third round quarterbacks and i'm going to read them okay Ooh, I'm going to read that them. sounds yeah, yeah. fun so uh desmond ritter yeah was yeah. the most recent davis mills before that yeah kellen mond okay will greer mm -hmm. mason rudolph oh yeah, yeah. cj bethard okay a lot of these guys but started they, but some they got games, to start games. jacoby Brissett. yeah sean mannion Oh, my manion. <laughs> Garrett Grayson, Mike Glennon. Okay. I mean, most of that list really did. They got to start some yeah, games. They got but, to play some games, but also. But he could get to start some later. It's NFL. Just what are you doing? Like, like you're, that's not stop you, drafting quarterbacks well, in the third round. Let me let me go to the next 10, though, just for the sake of. Oh, they're still third round? Uh, all third round. This is the last 20 third round picks. I read the first 10. 11 was Nick Foles in 2012. That's Russell okay. Wilson. Uh, okay. And then Ryan Mallett, Colt McCoy, Kevin O'Connell, Trent Edwards, Charlie Whitehurst, Brody Croyle, Charlie Fry, and Andrew Walter. So they're all like that Russell Wilson pick. Yeah, I mean, Russ was the only true uh, home run of that group. And I would not say Foles is a home no, run. No, he was not a home run. He but was it, he was he, uh, he went on a heater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did. Uh, all right. This question comes in from X uh from from Reverend Muscle Daddy? Reverend is, Muscle Daddy. <laughs> that yes. sounds like a nickname for yes, a running back sir. at some point in time. <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Muscle, Muscle Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is Kenneth Walker a sell high right now so, is the on. question. That's Reverend. That's yeah, what, no, that's not. No, Reverend, that's, Mr. Muscle. Muscle Daddy. It's Reverend. Yeah. Reverend <laughs> Muscle Daddy wants to know, is Kenneth Walker a sell high? He's had almost identical seasons in over the last two years. Which is true. I mean, he's, he's at 189 and 184 fantasy points. Same points per game. Similar snap percentage and opportunities. They've been nearly exact in terms of being the yeah, same. And in, two missed games each year. In totality, they are very similar. The, the, the path of the rookie year was much different. Because the path of the rookie year was starting the year behind Rashad Penny, eventually getting the job, and then being like the rookie running back of the year. Uh, a sell high. Oh man, maybe I, 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 I would not blame anybody at all for, for wanting to get out of Kenneth Walker of just, it could be like, this could be the best that we, we will it's ever see of Kenneth dynasty Walker. dynasty question. It really is. Because he's still, he's young. He's 23.6. He has done incredible things on the football field. It seems like he is locked in as the starter. Doesn't, doesn't catch Seahawks. a bunch of passes. No, he's he's all big plays. It's hard to find that type, of, that level when he's hitting. That's not production you can just find. Would you rather have Kenneth Walker or Joe Mixon? Kenneth Joe Walker. Mixon. Wow. Joe Mixon's not good. Joe Mixon. That's a shocker for Dynasty. I assume that would be a, a unanimous Kenneth Walker. So when when I when I look at running backs, I don't really care so much. I mean, I care to a good degree about age, but I care about contract length and how many years is left because, you know, Kenneth Walker, let's say he plays this season and it's more of a split with Charbonnet now that Pete Carroll's gone. Right. We, you know, we don't know what this system's going to look like with Kenneth Walker, whereas Joe Mixon just got signed to an extension with C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans and it, the situation looks good. And I don't think Joe Mixon is not good. He's older and he's not – as explosive as Kenneth Walker, no, nowhere near as explosive um, uh, as an athlete nowadays. But his situation, I think, is Jonathan Brooks much or better. Kenneth Walker in a dynasty startup. Brooks, I'm okay going Brooks there. Mix Mixon better hope he that that C.J. Stroud wants to throw in the ball a whole bunch. James and Cook he did or not Kenneth throw. Walker. Uh, I, I'll go Walker. I didn't hear that. Walker question. or James Cook? James Cook. Trey Benson, Kenneth Walker. 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 Okay, one more. Rashad White or Kenneth Walker? Ooh, White. 
Yeah, I think that one might be Rashad so, White. So to me, the, go, going through that, I think Kenneth Walker's a, a decent sell-high candidate, especially considering we don't know what this new offensive system will look like in Seattle. All the, right. Uh, looking at the contract real quick, though, Jay, the, the, the Texans can get out real easy next year if it doesn't work for Joe Mixon. But it will. <laughs> <laughs> My guy? Oh, I don't know about Whoa. that. <laughs> I just, Wait, we're at the stage we now. Are, we're we're statting right now. Yeah, and there's some players how, that have been jumping out. How I'm just how did you get Joe Mixon there? Where, like last year, Stroud just didn't throw to the running backs, and that's like Joe Mixon and his 3.8 yards per carry. He needs 50 plus receptions. Where did you end up with Joe Mixon on your ranking? Uh, Joe Mixon, I ended up with him at. Running back, 17. Okay. I'm higher than you. you 17. My, my guy? Actually. No. No, I've done that before with as, Joe Mixon. I was looking at our our team profiles. Houston Texans, 30th in targets to the running back position. Now, personnel can change that. but Yeah, remember when Cam didn't do it? Yeah. No, again, personnel can change that. But if, you, if Mixon does not get those targets, he's going to be a – colossal disaster Mixon will get the targets because you you uh, like Andy said the personnel changes it also once Devin Singletary got that role uh, and and you look basically from you know the last 10 game games of the season he was on a 50 target pace Devin Singletary was I need more 50 targets I need 50 receptions well sure I mean I would love I would love 150 targets Mike <laughs> that would be great but my point but is it's enough for him to get in the end zone and get 50 60 targets yeah I, I I think he'll be north of. I mean, 50 how targets. many targets did Kenneth Walker get in this discussion? Oh yeah, no, I, I'm not arguing that Walker catches a bunch of passes, but he actually has juice and he can get you a 50 yard touchdown. Yeah, that's Joe's not doing that. <laughs> no, no, he's I, will, not. I will 100 <laughs> percent concede the point. Mixon is not. Uh, what what is Mixon's longest run of this forthcoming season? Wait, what? Of the, the future? The, the future, yeah. What's what's going to be oh, his longest okay. run this I, year? I thought you had misspoken. Uh, you really do want me to predict the future. Yes. Wow. Uh, I think he'll have a 24-yard run. Yeah, I was going to go 22. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to go in the mid-20s. Whatever the, direct, whatever the angle will be, it will be from the center <laughs> of the field to the sideline over 24 yards. Yes. All right, quick break. Back with some more questions. The incredible research team here has informed me that Joe Mixon went right tackle for 44 yards last year Ooh! for his longest run of the season and then right over the right guard for 22, up the middle for 20. But look, that is not, that is not the most important factor. James Conner was living in those exact type of numbers, you know? Right, but, he, but it was only three total for Joe. Of over 20? Yeah. Yeah. And who is his More than two, man. Who is his <laughs> So, um, let's jump into another voicemail question. Hey, ballers. I was wondering how I should value this current draft class versus future 2025 and 2026 draft classes. Thanks so much. Yeah. So this is something that dynasty managers, um, it, it, there's different lines of thinking. And I think that the astute dynasty manager knows that the people who say that they know for sure what the future classes are going to be are not the real astute ones. Um, we, You know, first of all, always take a bird in the hand approach in Dynasty. A first-round pick this year is worth more than a first-round pick next year. By a lot. Always. Because you get an extra year. You get production now. Um, and on top of that, those – unless it's a just a massive disaster for that player – they're going to hold at, at the worst they're going to hold their value of if you're wanting to trade them next year to try and get some picks if not increase their value cuz they actually got to play yeah and that's not a 2024 is more valuable than a 2025 right. that's a every year this year is more valuable than next year which is more valuable than the next year i've seen i've seen people give advice of like you should trade this year's firsts for next year's first because next year's draft class is better We've done this long enough now. To, it, so, sometimes it works. Sometimes you know that next year it's going to be a great draft class for this reason or that reason. By the time that next year rolls around, an injury here, um, a breakout of a younger player there, a guy redeclaring for college, 
it, it just changes. It's really, really hard to accurately predict what's going to happen next year. Now, I would say that the quarterback position is a little bit more predictable. We knew that this year would, would have a handful of good quarterbacks. We hear right now that next year does not have a – as deep of a you know an elite quarterback draft class next I would, year, I would say even that changes though because you had yeah like when like, Joe Burrow breaks out and no one expected. Oh yeah, right. Joe Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels has like I can't imagine before the season started that people were saying Jaden Daniels is going to go number two overall. There was, I mean, not that long ago, like Spencer Rattler was supposed to be the number one overall pick, and he he was not. All right, this question from Noah Halloran. Is there a thing to having – is there a thing as having too many rookie picks? Oh, is there such thing? Yeah. Having, yeah, uh, I read it verbatim. It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's here is the problem with too many rookie picks, and sometimes you don't think about it. You do have to cut your roster for all the right. picks you've got. And then the guys in. without picks, like me, scoop those players up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So it's, it's like just, sitting at the edge of the I table. I am sitting there like a hyena <laughs> yeah. waiting for the scraps of the lions <laughs> to, fin to finish up on the carcass. And I'm like, ooh, Jaleel McLaughlin got dropped. <laughs> you, you've got to look when you're making these picks and you've got to say, when I take this third rounder or this fourth round guy, is he more valuable than who I would be cutting from my roster for him? And oftentimes it's not, in which case – um, Try to. That's when. Okay, go ahead and trade that pick for a future pick because that one is not going to be on your roster. I've I've finished a draft before a rookie draft where I I had to draft four rounds and the fourth pick that I had in that draft was my drop. <laughs> like I I literally just cut the player because I'm like he's it's not as <laughs> not as good as what my current roster was. YouTube question from Scott: Trade Hollywood now, hold, or wait for potential higher trade value during the season i actually have a good answer for this oh i've got a bad one let's see if <laughs> let's see if they're different yeah, well, yeah what if they're the same i'm gonna write yeah that's what i'm wondering <laughs> i yeah. would trade hollywood brown the moment the day after rashi rice's suspension gets handed down that's what i would do because it's coming and it's going to be four or six or eight or whatever it's going to be some amount of games that gives people that gives people a pretty good amount of excitement over a Hollywood start to the year. I really do agree with that. I have trade now um, as my piece of advice, but that's even better. It's, it's trade in the off season, trade before the season, because we, you know Hollywood might have been this might have been the heel problem um, that he was dealing with last year. He's a like he's a bad guy. Right, right, right. He really plays the heel I super think well. He'll never be a one well, again. Yeah, and. But we watched him. He was bad. He was he was hashtag bad on the field. Maybe it was the foot, and he's healthy and all that. But he's on a one year contract right now for Kansas City. And Kansas City, what does that tell you about how every other team views him? Yeah, and he and he they can't afford to pay him long term. So if he if he comes out and he's great, he's going to go elsewhere. If he comes out and he's bad, then maybe he can stay in Kansas City for a while cheaply. But then he's irrelevant. So I I think trading him now is and and actually waiting until the rushy suspension is great. That's when his value will begin yep. to Kadarius Tony, as I call it. That's the that's what it's called when a non Tyree Kill wide receiver begins to get publicity and buzz in Kansas City. Happened with MVS. Happened with Sky Moore. Yep. Yep. I, I'm in agreement of let let the market simmer <laughs> for now. A few moments ago, Kyle Borgogan puts Hollywood Brown <laughs> on the trade block. Yeah, that this advice should be acted on immediately. Uh, all right, IG question. I'm curious about this one. Uh, well, I'm curious for more than one reason now because it comes in from a handle, uh, alcoholic ostrich. Oh no! Oh, oh no! You're not flying. His head's not in the sand, guys. It's in oh, the bottle. <laughs> it's in the bottle. Um, oh, what? Oh, I didn't what? get my, I didn't get my swish. swish out. <laughs> what would you give up to acquire Derrick Henry for a championship push? Oh. Well, this is good because, Mike, you have him in Dynasty. You won a yep. championship. You you would love a back-to-backer. A -back I would. Um, you know, what would you take to get rid of Derrick Henry? And maybe you're not the right person because you I are. I am not the right person to ask the question because 
Uh, I could share with you my other running back options, <laughs> and then you will say you should not. Kenneth sh- Walker, right? Ken, well, Ken Walker and Derrick Henry are the starters. That's yeah. it. That's it. And then hold on. Oh, I'll I want to. T- hear I think this. your running back three might be Clyde. <laughs> so here's. Please. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. We got uh, Alexander Madison. Ooh. <laughs> okay. We got we got Clyde edwards alaire Yep. Mm. We have Audric Estime. Oh, this is why you're rooting hard. Market's moving. Uh, Ty Chandler, whose d- hopes and dreams were destroyed because of stupid Aaron Jones. No, no, I don't think so. I, the dreams of, oh, of dreams. him being yeah. the starter. Yeah, the dreams are no, good. No, Ty Chandler's still going to play. Yeah. And then Evan Hull. I just I have a bunch of backup running backs. That is so encouraging to me, being in that league with you, knowing now where your greatest weakness is. Because that's where everyone's greatest weakness is, except for Jason. That is very true. <laughs> I think Derrick Henry um, is worth a first, and a first is worth Derrick Henry. It's like a match made in heaven, depending on uh, on your league. Like, I, if I'm making a push for a championship, I'd I'd happily give up a first for Derrick Henry. I your, have your first is going to be a low end round one if if you're a championship contending right. team, and you get this year versus a future year. And you can win a championship. Andy, did you notice whose name was not in that list? Whose name? AJ Dillon. Because oh. you dropped. Because I cut him. Oh, that's I sent him to the waiver wire. How does that feel to be on this it side? Feel great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to blindly like. That's right. You oh, you're man. against him now. That's right. I said no more. And then when someone. <laughs> And then old Owl spent 18 off-season fab on him. Oh I said, enjoy. God. I saw that. You, <laughs> you said enjoy. You <laughs> fab on A.J. Dillon. Oh, he's a Packer fan. Of course he did. I have Derrick Henry, curiously enough, at 17 on my redraft rankings. Oh, how many, how wow. many cutties did you give him? Uh, Derrick Henry has 11 rushing touchdowns. Okay. I've got Derrick Henry at 11 right now, so I I still see him as an RB1 this year for the Ravens. The Gus Bus had so many touchdowns last year. Yeah. The opportunities will be there for him. I think we'll see a opportunistic, but finally slowing down Derrick Henry yeah. in Baltimore. Would you be willing to trade a first for Derrick Henry if you're a championship competing team? I would trade my first for Derrick Henry, yeah. And and the, the Well, I mean is, like next year's first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the the truth is, if you're not a championship competing team, trading Derrick Henry for yes. a first is yes. a good deal. That's why I'm saying this is like a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah, you're Derrick right. Henry in every dynasty league right now should be either on a championship winning team or traded for a first because someone will do it. It's a good point. You have to be a little bit more um, just next level on your trade offers. You got to find the teams that are making a push. Find the teams that. Uh, need the players that you have to be able to get value for them in a dynasty league. And that's what Thursday's show is all about. We're doing trade for and trade away players for dynasty leagues. Those are fun. We're doing trade tips. Those suck. Maybe I can pull off some sort of trade in dynasty before then. I did have to reject an offer this morning. Ooh, let's um, hear it. Um, it was an attempt to trade me. I think it was Amari Cooper coming my way. Okay. And I give up Lockett and a one, two, three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we all know who that trade offer came from. <laughs> That'll do it for today's episode of the show. But like I said, join us again Thursday, Dynasty Week, and head over to FootClanGiveaway.com. Win that Devon HN jersey. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.